back of a recent massive announcement from Amazon, Apple, and Google means what to us in the electrical industry, Gordon? Well, there's a truce in the smart home war. Oh, I didn't even realize there was a war. Explain more. There has been a war. It's been a big war going on in the battle because it's the battle for who and how smart homes work together. So at the minute, I've got smart thermostats, smart cameras, maybe smart lighting, and even the ability to turn on a hose pipe smartly from my holiday. And are you saying that maybe they're not talking to each other smartly? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so the answer is sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. And it depends who's in that chain and who's talking to who. So if you have a Apple does not like talking to Nest because okay. Nest is Google. Okay. and. Have they solved that problem or are they going to solve that problem? Well, the plan is to solve it and through 2020 that will emerge. So I think we we'll probably need to look at it a little bit closer to find out what's going on. Hey Google, what do you think of Alexa? She's one of my besties. Our crew is me, Alexa, Cortana and Siri. In front of me, we've got receivers, lamps, different types of switches and voice activated devices to make our home smart. Where's the problem? Okay, the problem shows itself in many ways and lighting is probably the best area to demonstrate it because it's quite complex. What you've got at home is you have different types of light source and control equipment. So you might have lamps, you might have uh, drivers, you might have switching modules. Um, and, and yeah, that, that because you have a you have a favorite lamp, you have a favorite, favorite type of lead tape you want to use or something and that, that's necessary. And then you have different types of switches. So you'll probably choose a switch to match the decor you want in the house. Uh, and at the moment, yeah, it's not guaranteed that all these devices work together. So here's a, 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 quite a, a legacy based lighting control system that talks to its own driver with a proprietary protocol. This one uses Zigbee to talk to Zigbee enabled lamps. This one uses Bluetooth to talk to Bluetooth enabled devices. And the problem is, in the middle, you've got these smart assistants. Everyone wants everything to talk together. And at the moment, that doesn't necessarily happen. Some good points there, but what does the consumer want? Okay, Gary, the consumer basically wants to be able to buy any lamp, light source, control gear, choose the digital assistant they want, and choose the light switch they want to work. And they just want the system to work together. Now, obviously, there's, there's risks in the market at the moment. You could choose a manufacturer and they stop supporting that switch. Or the lamp you use suddenly is no longer in production. And then suddenly your smart home doesn't work. So at the minute, to make your installation smart, often you have a hub at the point of the internet connection in order to start the communication process. Let's look at the weaknesses of hubs next. So life used to be simple. Switch on the wall. The switch sends out a signal to my receiver and it selects the lighting pattern that I press on the actual switch itself. That wasn't smart though. How do we make it smart? Okay. Smartphones came along and then people, okay, I want to now control my lights from a smartphone. Easy way to do that. Put a box in the cupboard that connects to the internet that liaises with the phone and the app and then translates the signal coming from the phone into a, the same signal that the existing lighting control system works. You said there was a problem with having hubs. What's the problem? Okay, so hubs themselves, they've obviously got to have a, an internet connection themselves. You've got to manage the software that's involved in that. And that may be fine if you've got one system, but obviously now we've got more and more systems coming at the house. So we've introduced a hub to make our lighting system smart. We've introduced another hub, and this hub here controls an automatic sprinkler system in our installation. So that's two hubs in order to make it smart. What's the issues? Okay, more hubs, more internet connections, more software to manage, more actual potential of security risk because the manufacturer has to keep the software updated in the hub to match the best practice on the internet at any particular time. So that's complex for the manufacturer. It's also complex for the user. They've got to make sure these systems are updating themselves. The second item is obviously for each hub, there's also an app. So a dedicated app for the lighting system, a dedicated app for the watering system. So you removed the hubs and you replaced it with Alexa. Is this what we're working towards, Gordon? Yeah, so what's happened is these smart uh, digital assistants have become incredibly popular. Millions and millions of devices sold and they are permanently connected to the internet. So essentially, the same connection that was in the hub, you now have in lots of rooms of the house 
a dedicated connection to the internet that's always there. So the plan is, instead of having a separate hub, that somehow these devices can connect directly to the internet using the smart speakers that, that so many people now have in the home. So that was an interesting look at smart devices and connectivity. However, at the start of the video presentation, you said to me, the war is over, Gordon. Can you elaborate on that now? Okay, so Google, Amazon, Apple have sort of formed, should we say, a peace committee under the voice of the, the project's called Project Connected Home Over IP. Okay. So I think that probably be abbreviated a chip. Oh, right. Right. We're we like an abbreviation, don't we? We'll love a, and we'll love a chip. Yeah, we do. So, Just the big three involved? Uh, no, so that, uh, that brings together obviously the tech giants and then plus uh, the Zigbee Alliance, which was one of the early smart home protocols. Yep. And in that group, you'll see some very familiar names. You'll see the uh, uh, Schneider Electric, okay. you'll see uh, Legrand in there, uh, Ikea in there, so oh, right. major retailer. You know, if you go on an Ikea these days, they're doing their own smart lighting, they're doing their own smart speaker. Uh, and then plus uh, companies, uh, Signify, but most people would still probably know them as Philips Lighting so in there. And then some more niche players. Uh, so you'll see uh, Somfy. So Somfy make blinds or, or window treatments if you want to sell an expensive blind. And um, and then a whole lot of chip producers as well. So probably less known to the to the viewers, but uh, you know the kind of people who are going to provide the, the core hardware. So that assembly has come together in order to do this new project moving forward. Yeah, to drive this standardised process in, in smart home. So you mentioned in there IP. Can you elaborate on those letters IP for me? Okay, so IP is Internet Protocol, and that's the communication that's the backbone of the internet. That's how. Billions of computers talk to each other. It's trusted. It's reliable. You know, it's very secure. So that this chip will build on that. Really, now, what you look at is certain devices need to be connected to the internet, and certain manufacturers play that. So think of the smart speaker, the CCTV camera. They need to be connected because they need to send lots of data for long periods of time. Okay. Things like a light switch or a thermostat. They just need to send intermittent bursts of data to, you know, to send instructions or receive instructions. Okay, yeah. So sense. they may join through uh, the, the uh, Zigbee protocol. There's talk of Bluetooth in there. So that, that's the kind of, it, it's a multi-layered approach and some device manufacturers may support all of the protocols. Others may just say, actually, we're just going to join in this, in this sort of point-to-point -point connection system. So with using this IP protocol, who's going to be the real winners? Okay, so the first one is the consumer. So they can buy a piece of smart home equipment, take it home and be confident that it's going to work on the, on the platform that they have. Okay, straight out of the box. Straight out of the box, hopefully. Um, second is obviously manufacturers and particularly probably those smaller manufacturers who don't want to develop hubs and apps. They can go out, develop to a defined standard with defined security and procedures to update software without having to worry about areas that they might not be experts in and have to go out and build hubs. So that's the same. And then from what it looks like, this is going to be an open protocol approach. So you'll have developers can also join in and they might develop dedicated software for the platform as well. So it just basically means all this whole area can operate a lot faster without, you say, little walls being built up around these separate protocols that have existed for now. So that was a really interesting look at a developing area within the electrical industry and one that will rapidly change in a very short period of time and obviously be a massive benefit to the actual customer and the use of smart technology in the electrical industry. Hey Google, tell me a joke. Why are fish so smart? Because they spend a lot of time hanging out in schools. Alexa? Tell me a joke. I attended a very emotional wedding recently. Even the cake was in tears.